So that's phase one of our trip. Looking out, seeing the road. That's part of the skyline. Right now we're about 30 miles from home, which is like 40, 50 kilometers, something like that. Passing some people on the road. Let's see, get an idea that this is what the road is like. This is Ellensburg type area. It's kind of green, got a lot of farming and stuff going on. Reminds me of Heyday, actually, because everyone's got their own farms. I thought you might want to see what the trip is like, so I decided to bring my video camera and record a few things for you. As you can see, this is fast driving. We're going 70 miles an hour. That's around like 110 kilometers. Temperature outside is 34C. And this road, we're actually on this, near the end of this section of road. This road's about 30 miles overall. Then we'll move to another section, which is like 25 miles, then move to another section, and you'll get to see all of those roads. So, it's nice. I want to give you the first idea of this is what it's like going to the lake since unfortunately you're not able to come with me which really fucking sucks but you know I will be home soon and you get to see this and this is my surprise video for you all right next section coming up in a bit there we are on the next section of road we are heading towards Vantage. We just passed through Ellensburg and all is running good. It's not much to look at. It's just a whole bunch of random etc. stuff. Coming up on a set of hills in a little while. About 25 miles till we get there. Still running 110 kph. Still, you know, the same temperature and everything. Everything's going pretty good so far on the trip. You know, as good as can be expected. But, it sucks because you don't get to be here and I wish you could be here. But, and then you could hold the camera so I wouldn't have to do both at the same time. So, we're just going to keep going on our way, seeing what we see. And if I see anything interesting, hopefully some stuff coming up, I will let you know because you'll be the first one to know about it. This stretch of road is the same stretch of road. It's a nice long downhill stretch. We went from that flat boring stuff to a nice downhill stretch. And now we're going downhill for the next 10 miles, so we're pretty damn high up. A bunch of wind farms right around this area, so they're kind of fun to look at. I did this road once at 180 kph on my motorcycle, and it felt fucking amazing. Good God, it was so intense. That was uh, a couple years ago, probably three years ago or so before Dad died. And my God, it was lovely. But yeah, it's a nice downhill stretch, and pretty soon we're going to be going to hit the river and you get to see the bridge that we go across and then we get a lot more of this good rocky stuff like this. It'll be fun. Is that my reflection in the glass? It is. Damn, I look good. Forgot to blow up the windows so you can hear. Uh, river up here. There's an uh, amount of road work apparently going on. We've had it left and right. Uh, there's a, sharp, a hard left turn, so I might set the camera down for a sec after the bridge. Plus, the right lane is ending, so we might get stuck behind a slow-ass semi, which actually seems like it's going to be the case, because there's three of them up ahead, and one of them's going insanely slow, and the speed limit just dropped, so i got to slow down as well. Anyway, so... There, we're crossing the bridge. I don't know how I'm multitasking all this stuff. It's quite amazing, really. The water looks pretty nice. And it's the Columbia River, actually. It's quite beautiful. You see those rock walls? Yeah, we're following those for quite a ways. Like the next, well, off and on for the next two hours. Then we'll hit more mountains fun. Okay, this is the big whatever part of the bridge. I don't know. And our sharp left turn. That's 
semi is kind of drifting a bit. I don't want him to flip me, so I gotta be careful. I don't know if I can pass him or not. It's kind of going either way. I'm gonna go fast so that way I can pass him. It's not very windy, but enough where I don't want to be around him. Okay, this stretch of road is basically the same one, but they call it something different, I think, because, I don't know, every time you change directions, you gotta name something different. Uh, on this one for about 20 miles, roughly, and then we're gonna take another road, and we will officially be going the slowest speed possible for the rest of the trip at that next section. Okay, here's a sign saying our speed limit is going up again, but there's a huge congestion pile of traffic, so you don't want to see that, so I will see you later. So we just we just took our turn off to go on the next set of roads, and this is the most boring stretch of road on the entire trip because it's 19 miles long, and the first 15 are literally this straight. You don't curve. You don't do anything. You just go straight. There's a, a little bit of an up, a little bit of a down on little hills, but it's this fucking straight. This is also the maximum speed we'll be going the whole rest of the trip too. We'll be 60 miles an hour or about 100 kph because the last was the freeway which is faster and these are all going to be state roads which are slower and don't have as many lanes. So there's that. Um, we're coming up to a town in 20 miles called Afreda which is where Justin lives. The guy who owes me money and that guy was in a rush to pass me because he doesn't you know, want to wait and go the speed limit. Um, let's see, what else is going on? I'm gonna make a stop over in Afreda and grab some lunch to go, maybe a milkshake to cool me down, because all the ice that I put into my drinks is all melted and the drinks are starting to warm up. Pretty ridiculous. Yeah, after the 15 mile stretch, there'll be a couple more miles where there's like very light curves and then you keep going straight and that is about it. So, when we get to that excitement of Afredo with all the couple thousand people that live there, I'll show that to you too. Just a side note, um, we're still on that long straight stretch I told you about. I uh, just passed a farm called Hay Days Farm, so that was pretty crazy. It's spelled days like D-A-Z-E, like I'm in a daze because of all the heat. I thought it was pretty interesting actually, and I wanted to let you know about it because I'd make a smart ass comment or two if you were here with me. This is Afreda. I came in about a mile back or so, stopped and grabbed some McDonald's for lunch with a very cold chocolate shake to drink with it. I didn't stay to eat, I eat on the go because I want to get up there. And it's going to save time to eat on the road. So there's really not much to it. It's, I personally don't really like the town. It's nice to go through, but I wouldn't want to live here. <laughs> yeah, Justin lives here, so that's kind of weird. His house is a few how is a few streets down on the left, uh, past the next stoplight. But we're not going to stop or say hi or anything because he owes me a lot of money and is not paying back. So this is just the town and it's you know small town America I guess. I don't know. I don't live here. Yeah. We just passed through a town called Soap Lake. It is much smaller than Afreda, and it's only like a few miles outside of Afreda. They could basically be the same town as far as I'm concerned, but anyways, there's a pretty good sized lake uh, here. It's interesting, they call it Soap Lake because it looks like there's soap residue along all the banks and all the rocks and everything, and sometimes you even see it when it makes little waves and everything. It looks like they all get pushed to the edges and you got this little soapy residue looking stuff in the water. I don't actually know what it is. I can actually see it from the highway on the edges right next to me. Uh, so I never actually stopped here or anything though, so. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I would like to come and go boating here. And since it's the 4th of July weekend coming up, everyone's gonna be using it, as well as a number of other ones. Those mountains and these rock walls and stuff in the background, they're still following us. We're gonna be following them for a long time. This stretch of road will go on for a while before we take a turn uh, and be on another stretch of road, which is pretty damn similar, actually. So, well, if you like rock walls, if you like looking at this kind of stuff, you should be good.
coming up on Grand Coulee Dam. It's one of the biggest concrete dams in the United States, in my state, of all things. And my grandpa actually worked on it. Helped building it, so I thought that was pretty cool. I was able to drive across it once with my mom and dad. They don't allow people to do that anymore now after 9-11. So, that's pretty sucky, but when you look down, it is impressive. Like, it's very amazing. But when you look at it from the side, you're like, oh, that doesn't look so tall. But when you're up there, it is damn tall. This is part of the reservoir created by the dam, so... That's pretty big in itself, but... Let's see it. That's the top of the towers right there next to the... That smooth slab of wall is. Part of it right there. That's the top edge. There's a spot where you can pull over and actually watch a laser light show over the dam. I think it's every night even. During like the summer, but that night time and we're not gonna do that because it's early and about 38 degrees now. I just stopped at a gas station, didn't have to, but if I fill up at this gas station, I do not have to fill up again on at all until after I get home. Here's some more of the dam. Area where they don't let you in or anything. Employees only, all that crap sort of stuff. Come around, we have to cross a bridge, which will give us a perfect view of over what the dam looks like. Of course, it'll take a minute or two to get there because of this winding traffic. Actually, we have a pretty good view right here. But it's hard to, to aim and drive at the same time. Pull back all the way on the view, so they'll have water coming over all those spouts. And Somewhere they got a laser show, I don't know where. And plus we're following this really slow truck, so. A little bit more time to get a view of that. I don't know which part Grandpa worked on. You know, there's a power plant over, there's three different power plants at least that go with this one. God, that sucker is huge just looking at it. And we're pretty high up on this hillside driving down and it's really high up. So we are almost at the bridge. And I have a car following me. It's possible it's a government vehicle because they thought I was trying to record stuff about the dam with my video camera. It's going to take a while. We'll go through this neighborhood and then we'll cross right up here. There's a deer on the road. Ha! Ah. Oh damn it, I tried to get it on camera, that's awesome. Okay, we're gonna do a side view like this because I can't see and drive perfectly very well at all. So hopefully it's a good view for you. We're just going across this bridge, across the river. I'm pretty sure that it's a good view though. Huge, huge dam. It's pretty awesome. Now we're going to take a left turn and we're going to go up to follow the road where we normally go. And I guess that white vehicle, you might have seen the reflection. I guess it's something in the rear mirror. 
was not following me was not a government vehicle. Well, it is a government vehicle because of the way the license plate was and the shady people that drive it, but they are not following me now because I realized, oh, he's just recording the dam. Like all the millions of people who drive down here every year or however many drive down here this year, every year. So from this point on, we've only got, it's about 61 miles to go. But from the gas station to when I stopped the vehicle for the last time at the lake is about 61 miles. But it's all these kind of weird little back roads and everything. So the speed limit will hardly ever get higher than 50. And oftentimes be much slower than that because there's a lot of hairpin turns and stuff coming up. Holy crap, that temperature just shot up now. 39 now, god damn, it's hot. So I'll pause until we get to something more interesting. Winding roads. We're going up and down random hills and mountains right now. We'll be doing this exact same thing in about 40 minutes on the last section of road. Because even though we were only 60 miles away at that one point, uh, it takes like an hour and a half or so to get there, or even longer, because all the roads are like this, and you can't exactly go fast. I'm going 50 right now, and I actually want you to go even slower. Right now they want me to go 40. Like, yeah, whatever. So, just going round and round and round. Cross some cattle guards, get to more cattle guards. We'll have a 15 mile stretch that's relatively straight, you know, a few curves here and there. There's also a temperature drop that happens because even though we're going uphill and we're in the mountains, you know, it's cooler here because of all the trees and all the shade or something. Plus, when we actually get to the lake, it's going to be even more cool because all the water kind of cools. That sound wah, wah, was going over a cattle guard for us so cows don't walk across the road in different areas they shouldn't go to. We've passed several of those. Anyways, yeah, the lake's going to be cooler than here, and this is cooler than the dam area, even though they had the little reservoir and water and everything there, so that's going to be interesting.
we go. Our last stretch of road, 22 miles and a quick turn and another quick turn and we'll be there. That's more roads like the ones you just saw, but there are some that have twist backs and everything else, so that should be kind of interesting to do. See you in 22 miles. Bear. He was right there. He was right there. God damn. Oh shit, very careful. Temperature has dropped a lot. It's only about 30 C now. Probably even less. Because we're getting close to a big lake. Road. Sign today's special is Indian tacos for $5.99. I didn't think they had a restaurant in here. Nice and slow in here because this is the resort area. Spot where you launch the boats at. A lot of people here. Looks like they're working on building the new cabin over at that one. We can go down that way to get to mom's, but we have nowhere to park, so we're gonna go down this way. Let's see if she's here. And yep, mom is here. I see her car.
And that's home right there. This is the road that we came in on. Slow pan, this is the store building. Gas. Boat launch. No one's out there right now, someone's swimming. I'm just walking around, wanted to show you what I uh, see. Like we're walking back from the store together. Some cabins people can stay at. These ones on the left here are where people live. This is all construction materials. They're building two new cabins right down here. There was some wind damage, apparently, uh, over the winter, so now they're putting new ones up. That's pretty cool. So it gives us a nice view while we're waiting for them to put it up. I'm going to take this first road down this way. Nice look at the lake while we're at it. Beautiful view. So if you get one of these first cabins, you get an awesome view of everything. More cabins. This is July 1st. Everyone's decorating their stuff for the 4th. Mom and I were decorating a bunch today. Mom's cabin right there. Flags and stuff and I'm just going for a walk. She's up on the deck reading right now. Up on Jim's cabin. He's selling his, just like mom's selling hers, so. Well Jim's up there right now, talking to one of the neighbors. And Joellen's coming by later on today. And tomorrow, Andy and Tom and their families will be coming by. It's another view of the lake, right on the water, so it's pretty damn nice. That dock there is the dock that we use. I'll go out there sometime later and show that to you. A lot of Seahawks stuff because this is Washington and we gotta love our Seahawks. There we go, there it is. I had to get in the shade so I could show you. A lot of flags and good stuff. Coming down this way, um, Dad's old boss's cabin is right around here. I'm gonna just pass it actually, I don't recall offhand because I don't think so. But uh, we actually first stayed up here back in like 95 or 96 or something. And that's how we first got to know about the place. It might have been May earlier than that. I don't remember which one is theirs. Oh, I might have their name on it. This great one on the side here. And there's somebody there, so we won't bug them. There's like five different docks for everyone has enough room for everything. We come around the road, which loops around. Just going for a walk with my honey. This is just a half of the resort. That's mostly people who own these places. And a little later I'll show you half of the resort with people who don't own the places and they rent stuff. This is where they store all the yard refuse over there for like, I guess it's like a community <sighs> mulch pit or something. We used it earlier today. People store all their boat trailers down that way. And of course you can rent a spot for your trailers and other places too. Not usually very many here. That's row three in the back with that one. This is, actually that's row four. This is row three. This is row two that lines up with mom's cabin, so we're in row two, and that is the first row in the front. So we're gonna go down the back of row two because, so that way you get an idea of what the back side looks like. I did not bring up my boat this time because I had to take a bunch of stuff out of mom's home, so 
And I have the lake at home I can just use it on too. On the way up here I saw several deer. A little tiny deer. It was super tiny, like half the like half the height of a car with super skinny legs. And I saw a bear. I tried to get it on video but might not have. Sees me coming. Wants to know what I'm gonna do. Some more houses. Uh, most of them are pretty nice. So. What are you gonna do, kitty? Be nice. We're just walking here. That's mom's car and my truck next to it down there. The people in the cabin right next to my uncle's or the one that's by my uncle's, I believe. I don't know the story. It's just nice to go walk around here and go sit on the dock. There's a car coming, so I better get out of their way. And the back side of my uncle's is the red. It's kind of showing everything going on around here. Their neighbors are pretty nice people that are right over there. Hey, hey, hey! That's right, Uncle Jim. Coming this beautiful looking truck right here that's getting dirty because of all the bugs and all the yard work we did today. Drying out a nice chest. I'll be putting my tent, I'll be moving the trucks around and my tent will go here. Andy's tent will go there. Tom's truck will go over in this direction and he sleeps in the back end. Everyone else is going to sleep inside. And up there on the deck is Mom. She's reading her book. Take it over. That's a camera. It's not a... Ooh. Yeah. Take pictures of ghosts. What are we going to do when it's late at night? Well, we got the tent set up for tonight. Because we're going to be out here the next three or four nights. Probably four nights. At this corner I keep all my shoes in. My bag of stuff over here. A few little random odds and ends. My tissues is laid and feeling good. Some pillows from home. And over in this corner, there's a whole bunch of nothing, really. We would move stuff around so that way you'd have room for your stuff. On a nice soft mattress, blow-up mattress. I thought that was pretty cool. Show you where I'm sleeping at tonight. You can kind of see everything. See, it's dark out. I can see, but it's not very light out, so... See what I'm showing you, but it's late at night, and you should be here with me to enjoy it. Good night, then. It's almost 6:30 in the morning. 6:30. Get ready to go fishing with the brothers. Here's the tent. Which I'll set up right here. Everyone's still sleeping except for me and my brothers. I 
nice cold morning. I'll put on pants. Oh my god, we're freaking freezing. But it was really cold last night. Didn't no, I don't know. But we get up early so we can do some fishing before breakfast. And that's what we're gonna do. Everything's very messy. So, I'm gonna come back to this and jump back in after, after fishing, maybe. I'm just gonna go for a walk down past the store and show you the other part of the store. Uh, this is where they were building the cabin at, and as you can see, it's getting bigger. They were just laying the floors on Tuesday. Now it's Friday and they're putting up most of the walls. This is all prefab construction type stuff, so it's nothing, nothing fancy doing all themselves, but it's still pretty cool. We didn't do much today. Just stayed up at the cabin. I slept a lot. We got up early for fishing, slept on the boat, slept on the deck, slept in the house. Too hot to sleep in the tent. Oh, a FedEx truck. I wonder if they got anything special. So, he's wanting to work so he can get off during the holiday with his family. It's July 3rd now, which means that you should have gotten your flowers in that I had sent to you. I hope you enjoy them. I don't know if you noticed, but the word really was on the card 26 times. Which means that 26th was the date of our anniversary. March 26th, there's the dock. Nice day. So March 26th was our anniversary day. There's the store. That's why I picked 26. Plus it barely fit, but I made it work. They might be pulling out a propane fire pit tonight and having a fire or go play some cards with aunt and uncle. This is the other side of the resort, which is mostly rental stuff. The, our side's mostly people who own it. A lot of the rentals are. Simple cabins. Some don't have bathrooms. Most do. Most have electricity. And also very well shaded too for the most part, so you don't have to worry about the sun most of the time. Just hanging out. Everyone's showering now that they got back from the lake for the day. Getting the lake water off of them and they're making some dinner right now. Spaghetti and corn on the cob and oh that sounds nice. So just doing a nice time just walking around. Get some activity since I slept most of the day. It's Saturday morning now for you and you're probably awake. Or well, get waked up by everything. I think it's around 7.30 in the morning right now over there. It's just like 5.30 at night here. I came down here a couple nights ago with my mom. And there was like no trailers here. Now, come in and this whole side is all full of trailers. It's pretty crazy. Let's go on this back way. This is the fancy cabin right there. Hard to see because it's all covered up in view and everything. Now, this is pretty fancy actually. Based on the description, I got sites for just tents and everything, and big open area so if you want to play volleyball or badminton or something like that. It's pretty nice. And they come around this back way, which is the more primitive side if you just want it right for your tent and you bring everything. maintained room to get here, but that's part of the charm. They know what they're doing there. they got a good spot in the shade. You get a little taste of 
table for your spot. Nice. I'm just gonna go a little back way. I don't know how I'm gonna edit this video to make it look awesome. I might even just slap every individual segment I have in here together and call it good, because I don't know how to edit that stuff. But there is the fish cleaning station for the resort, like if you rent a place. It really smells like fish, so I would not suggest going over there unless you have no choice. I went fishing this morning, and he caught a bunch of fish. And nobody else caught anything. I lost my favorite lure. So I might have got a half a fish. So I'm going to count it as a half a fish. This cabin it was, has not been used as long as we've been up here. And we've been up here off and on for almost 20 years. Mostly on. So yeah, nothing there. They were going to put an Indian casino in that spot. But there's hardly any people up here to justify a casino. And just some back area stuff, I guess, they use for storage or whatnot. They got some of the building materials for the other cabinet on this side still. Oh, they throw all the garbage and their junk heap and stuff over there, I guess. Who knows, it'll get mulched eventually or something. And coming around out to the roadside. I hope YouTube allows the video too. This can be quite long. Maybe an hour or more when we finally get it all done. Uh, I hope the audio works on this pretty well because yeah, that's the road we came in on. He just ran over a cattle guard. You could hear a little farting, kind of. No, well, he's wide at least. This is the way in. Showed it a little bit earlier, but it was kind of hard to see. So we'll just go for a walk, and we'll go hit rows three and four, and then come on back. That's just some of the cabins and stuff. This big open area, which I don't know what it's used for. I don't think it's owned by anybody, really. Just sort of there. This little building here is the laundromat and arcade area. Well, when mom came down two months ago, everything was normal. Now, there's no arcade. They only had like six or seven arcade games, but they're all gone now. We checked a couple days ago. I didn't ask them why, but it's weird because they had it there for all these years and now nothing. Maybe they sold the games or something. I don't know. They weren't making enough money off it. for a nice walk, nice little breeze right now. Not hot every day though, but you're used to that. So you would probably enjoy it. Especially the water, which will definitely cool everything down when you're done. So that's row one going down that way. That flag up there. A couple houses in front of the yellow car is mom's. I'll wait until she sells it. A lot of people out there doing their thing, having fun. Now we're going to go the back way. Well, I have to go the regular way. I 
that's row two, which we kind of came down part way before, but we're going to go back up that way because we've seen what row two looks like. This cabin here, owned by the Kellogg's, they have a nice bench on the end of the dock with their name on it that they let anybody use, so that's pretty nice. Still got to show you the end of the dock, too, my goodness. Things down that way. This is row three, and it's a lot more shaded because all the trees and everything in the way. Sometimes you still get views of the water. Nice though. This is the back of mom's. That trailer there. They're pretty cool. Afternoon. About the same as rows one, two, and three, and there's four in the corner and five way back there, and they're all about the same, honestly. So, we'll roll on around and make our way back to row two, and one of these days, pretty soon, I'm going to show you the dock, and maybe we'll go some fishing. charge my battery on this thing. Make sure I have enough left for the rest of the trip. Back to row two again. Clear the tent a little bit bigger. Oh, well, Jim's actually on the back of the truck, I think. Talking to a couple neighbors, it looks like they were cleaning out their cabin and stuff today because they sold it. I think after they leave here now, they won't be coming back. I believe in a couple days, so we're gonna enjoy our time while we can. I don't think those people he's talking to are the ones who bought it though. Hey ho! Tommy. How's it going? Doing good. So you talked to your lady last night? Oh yeah. 
That was pretty cool. Live and well, everything good? Yeah, everything's great. Misses me, of course. I don't know why. I can't figure it out either, but for some I'll reason. I'll fill that girl in when she gets over here. I, I can't, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you got lots of stories saved up to share. Uh, and, and don't worry, they'll all be good. Well, they're all true, too, so. No, I didn't say that about she, uh, Oh, my God. Now I am kind of worried. That's home, that's my tent. This part's not hanging down as low as it should. That's pretty good. Hold on, we got it zipped up and airing out. And there's my sleepy. This is everybody after dinner. Well, half the people. We're around talking and all this stuff. Look at this place, it is crazy. Hey, little boy, are you trying to hide in the ice chest? Is it going to be cold in there? Yeah, nice and cold. Yeah. What's that? This is for you. See? It's you. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, it is. Not doing that. Well, I'm showering. We're gonna get my shoes on. Hot rod. Yes. Get out of there. Oh, okay, sir. Let's go down the dock real quick. That's pretty nice for the house. I'll tell you later. This is the path we take. There's actually two paths, but this one works good to go on the dock. There's lots of docks, as you can see. Over there and further down. And ours and several others down that way. And more that we can't even see right now. Because we're not far enough out. We'll come fishing down here in a bit. Here's the little beach area that we sit on and they moved all of our stuff off for now, but we play out here out in the dock area. It's fine. It's fun. Tom's boat's that one. I gotta go on a nature ride later. We went fishing in there this morning. New. This was not here uh, two days ago. This is the bench from the people I told you about. Very nice. Usually we bring down our own stuff. A little choppy and stuff now because everyone's doing their own thing. Got a big swimming area in the middle that have no boats in there between on the other side of that boat. That gets a lot of action over there. There's some people over there. I can't see them. So. So yeah, the sun's. It's around I don't know, like seven o'clock or so. I'll come down here fishing in a bit, and we'll just go out and have a good. T I'll go out fishing on the dock tonight because they're going on the nature ride tonight. And later on, have a good time. There's another lake down, there's a little channel all the way down there, which you can't see from here. You can go to get to the other lake. It's pretty cool. 
kick back here, have a good time. Guy on the jet ski going crazy out there. They're having a good time. Another one over there. Or there, yeah. This one's not very good on this one. So yeah, it's pretty fun. Somebody got wet right there and walked all the way down to the end. I won't go on the nature ride with them because that's the mom's thing. She can always use, she doesn't, believe it or not, she doesn't have a lot of three months. All this stuff is all everybody else's stuff in all these cabins. They just leave it down here sometimes or take it back up. No one really steals much of anything, so we're pretty good. There's that cabin they're building. I think they're stopping right there now as they're off for the weekend and they'd have to do the roof or something there, so. And Joe Uncle Jim's house. Oh, there she is. Looking at the deck at night. I'm doing like a little video for Heidi. Oh, hi Heidi. It's kind of dark because you can't really see, but yeah, that's Lori. Hi so, Heidi. Everyone else is kind of resting right now. Are you playing with Lori yet or no? Andy's yeah. up there. Oh, Mom's over the there. Is she on that, Joey? Hi. Are you no, just, he's recording. Oh. This is just recording. That's Melissa. You can Hi. see her the best because she's right next to the light. <laughs> okay, There's Tom. We don't look at him, though. He's not have a shirt on. He doesn't have a shirt on? Yeah. yeah. Just hit 7 a.m. and it's overcast on the last day. And I think everybody said that we're leaving. Well, not me, and not Andy's family, and maybe Mom though. So just one person maybe. Yeah, nice morning for fishing, but I think we're all kind of done with fishing. Day. 
Over the hills of the mountains. Pretty quiet lake though. Mom is already up. Putting the decorations. There's a couple boats out there, but they're very hard to see. That's a little campground, not part of the resort. There's a boat, that little white dot way out there. And I think that's a boat right out there. Straight in the shot, little white dot. Hard to see. Pan over this way. That over there is a separate campground or something, or it might not even be a campground, just a spot to camp at. That's all I can see this morning. Everybody else just taking it easy. Rest and relax and... After everybody else gets up, we'll talk for a bit, and then I'll start packing. I have to, I have to stop at everyone's house today to deliver some stuff. A bench, a barbecues, rolled up tapestry. So I don't get to go home until after I deliver to everybody, which is kind of messed up because I have the truck. But whatever. So I'm gonna charge this battery so it's good for the trip on the way home and, and then I'll head home. Probably leave here by noon or so. After all the traveling and dropping stuff off people's house, I should be lucky to be home by six. That's what I'm aiming for. Maybe earlier if I'm lucky, but we'll see. Just made the turn off of the final road. So now we're on the 22 mile stretch going home. It is 11.59, because you have to get out of there before noon, otherwise mom makes you stay another day. Something to that effect. So yeah, I have about a four hour drive ahead of me. I do not plan on making any stops on the way, but I have the truck of the bed of my truck is full of all the shit that mom wants to save. So, I will have to go to my house to unload stuff while I wait for Andy to get home. Then I'll have to go to mom's house to unload her stuff. Then go to Andy's house to unload his stuff. And then go all the way back to Tom's house to unload his stuff. Now his would be the most convenient first stop so I don't have to backtrack like five or six miles each way. But all of his shit is in the very back, and it's also the heaviest, and he also will not be off work when I get back home. So, that will be very, very fun. So if I get back in town by four and start unloading crap and taking care of all the crap, I should be able to be home so I can take care of my own shit by 6 p.m., which is what I'm aiming for right now. Of course, if there's road construction or I see a bear or something like that, that'll hold me back. In the meantime, I've got a four hour drive. Well, I just stopped recording two minutes ago and maybe I should have kept going because there was a big ass deer in the middle of the road. But I was not slowing down and it moved off to the side in a small trot. And also I got this big load of shit and I just want to get going home. So I did not record it, but it was beautiful. Hunting season coming up in a couple months. Very nice.
small town of Keller, which is on this stretch of road that I was just recording for you, um, right at the spot where it looks like the food mart is, it's possible that Andy got through here before he got stopped. I'm at the very front of the stop line. I'm stopped in the middle of the road. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on. They said there's a bit of an emergency and I should hold up for a few minutes, so that's what I'm doing. I can't see Andy's vehicle, so I don't know if he got by or not, but I assume maybe we'll find out later. Just got word that it appears there was a chopper that landed before, right before I got here and it's gonna medevac somebody out in the air because we're at least 40 miles from any hospital of somewhat decent size and at least ni probably 90 miles more like it. Um, probably a firefighter, so I don't think it was Andy or his family. I don't see his vehicle or anything anywhere, so I assume it's not them. I checked my cell phone. I got no service, so I can't text or call or anything like that. Ambulance sitting in the corner off the road. I haven't seen anybody at that. And if the chopper was here before I got here and they didn't fly out right away, it's going to be pretty serious, so they got to stabilize whoever it is. So, I'll wait and see what happens. And the other road, the other side appears to be moving right now to get out of the way or something, so maybe they'll let us go next. We'll find out soon. There's the chopper. Saw that shit. Saw that shit. Hold on a sec. Find that guy out of there. That's pretty damn crazy. My brother just came through there. Yeah, chopper, saw that, didn't see Andy's vehicle. Okay, there we go. Didn't see Andy's vehicle, didn't see anything. Saw the chopper, I'm sure he's well past now, probably pretty close to Grand Coulee right now, but they let us go, so on my way again. It's probably a hold up of maybe 15, 20 minutes at the most. That'll put us in Yakima around 4.15, 4.30. That didn't help at all.
driving through a Freda, where Justin lives. Andy's vehicle was parked outside McDonald's, which is good to know because now I know I might have time to unpack my stuff and unpack mom's stuff when I get home before having to go to his house and unpack his stuff. And then go to Tom's and unpack his stuff. So, yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, roughly hour and a half, hour 45 until I get back to Yakima. 100 miles or so. Depending on how fast the traffic goes, which is dirt slow through Afreda, we'll see what happens. stretch of road 30 miles till we get home it is 335 so we will come in just after four o'clock based on how the speed changes and if traffic catches you know if traffic does a good thing and don't have to wait for it very long so so we get home just after four can unload my stuff then go to mom's and do hers and everything will be great that's the current status right now and i am looking forward to freaking being home
25 minutes ago. Uh, total round trip, four hours, five minutes. Would have been less if we didn't stop in Keller for that helicopter. I got a bunch of stuff to take to Mom's and Andy's and Tom's. Box, bag stuff. Pulled out all my stuff already. Bag, more bag in the back. And this whole truckload of stuff. One item back here is mine, but it's small and I can't get to it, so I'm gonna take it out when I get home. Again. So I'm gonna take the cooler up, put the stuff in there in the fridge so it stays cold, get a cold drink and keep going on. It is about 40 C right now. Hotter than it was at the lake and I am melting. Three or two and a half hours later, finished all the deliveries. But I got this giant pile of stuff over here to work on. And I've got a number of vehicle problems I have to work on because of the trip. And stuff that's been building up for a while. But I'm not going to do anything right now but kick back on the couch and spend time with you, babe.